Hi there, and welcome back to another game design tip. We're on tip number four. Uh, my name is Ben from Circle Canoe Games. Today's tip is all about prototyping, so let's go ahead and jump in. So I think probably the number one pitfall I see very early game designers make, and I was certainly in this boat, is that they spend too long making their first prototype. Um, I, I remember, honestly, with the first board game I designed, I spent forever cutting out these custom pieces out of chipboard uh, because I was sure the game was awesome. And it was a cool idea, which I never finished because I didn't know how to finish a game at that point. And I spent so long on the prototype that when I had to go making changes later, it was really demotivating because I knew it was gonna take me so much time to make those changes. So my recommendation is that you should spend as little time as possible making your first prototypes. You need to just get a really rough version to the table so you can see how it works, right? Do the mechanics work? Do the, the pieces that you have in mind work? This is not something that needs to be a work of art. It doesn't need to be aesthetically pleasing in any way, right? We're talking about bare numbers and colors if necessary so that your game, you can start to see how things are coming together. As you work on your game, as you play test it and, and try ideas, each version, you can start improving. So you want to spend as little time as possible producing your prototypes, especially the early prototypes. So how should you go about producing your prototypes? Well, I think really there's probably three main things I've seen, and so you'll probably wanna do one of these. One is good old paper and pencil, right? Just get some paper, cut out some card shaped pieces, write down the stats. If you have a simple game, I think that's maybe the best way to start. It just allows you to move things around on the table, see how your idea is working. Um, if, you, if you feel like you want to be able to change things a little bit more without having to erase necessarily, uh, I know some people that work a lot with uh, laminated cards or pages and wet erase markers. Um, that allows you to be writing in different colors very easily, to be changing numbers or values as you need, um, and it has the advantage that the pieces are a little bit more rigid, right? The cards are stiff, so it feels a little bit more like a game early on. Uh, personally, I've never used that. It just hasn't appealed that much to me. And third, you can design straight in a computer. Uh, as long as you don't get bogged down in the details and all the options that a computer gives you, designing a computer can work in your advantage. Personally, I use the computer to design most of my prototypes. Not all of them. Some of them I use paper and pencil, but many of them I go straight into a computer. I'm very comfortable working in uh, programs like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and things like that. So I can very quickly make a digital prototype that I can instantly try out. And the advantage is, if I wanna change something, I can go in and do that very quickly on the computer, and all it requires is printing out and cutting out another set instead of having to hand write a bunch of stuff. So that's probably my preferred method, but there are times when I just simply write it out uh, with a paper and pencil. And let me give you an example of an early prototype of mine. Uh, so this is from my game uh, Paint Rollers. This is a roll and write uh, game based on a color wheel. And so here's just a card. Let me see if I can get this to focus for you. Uh, here's a card from the very first version. And you can see I designed it on a computer, and uh, but it was very simple, basic, uh, you know, basic text, a placeholder image, and some numbers on there that I threw in kind of as placeholders because I knew sort of the idea I wanted. As soon as I got a, a proof of concept with those very basic cards, um, I started improving. The next version got a little better, a little better, and so probably, you know, two or maybe three versions down the line, I started to get to versions that looked more like this, okay? Still definitely not a finished artwork in terms of what a, uh, a finished design should be, but it begins to be more thematic. Uh, there is a design aesthetic or, or a look that I'm starting to move towards, and all the information is there, even beyond just the base information. For example, um, at the bottom of the card, I have all these colors, and I included the color that was named, so it wasn't just reading, it was also visually you can see what color it is. Uh, and so you start adding in some of those extra elements to see how that helps or detracts from gameplay. 
So you can get more complicated, you can make beautiful prototypes down the line, but the big takeaway from today's tip is you need to keep your first versions of prototypes very simple. Make it as simply and as quickly as you possibly can so that you don't waste lots of time, right? Because most of the ideas you have are going to have to go through a lot of changes before they make it through to the final game. So don't invest a lot of time. It'll make it a lot easier to make changes down the line if you haven't put in a ton of time to your first prototype. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, make sure you hit the like button. And of course, if you want more content like this, more game design projects from Finish This Game, uh, I'd encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. I love making these videos to help you out, to help you along your game design journey. I'll see you in the next video.